Hello, Sirius Survivor here, and today we're going to look at the top 10 types of cyber attacks. Cyber attacks are increasingly common in our current day, and attackers can launch campaigns without human intervention with the advent of network-based ransomware worms. The number of these types of events has increased exponentially in number and in complexity. A cyber attack is when someone or an organization deliberately, maliciously attempt to breach the information system of another individual or organization. These attackers often look for ransom or other types of monetary gain, but some recent attacks show us that destruction of data is also a goal. But attacks have been perpetrated and can be with a variety of motives, including political activism, military, and other motives. The top 10 types of cybersecurity attacks. Number one is malware. The term malware encompasses various types of attacks, including spyware, viruses, and worms. Malware generally uses a vulnerability to breach a network by a user clicking on a planted or dangerous leak in an email attachment. And this link is then used to install malicious software inside the system. This type of software can deny access to critical components of the network, obtain information by retrieving data from the hard drive, disrupt the system, or even make it inoperable. Malware is extremely common, the most common types being viruses. These infect applications attaching themselves to the initialization sequence of your device. The virus then replicates itself, infecting other code and programs in the computer. Viruses can also be attached to executable code or associate themselves with a file by creating a virus file with the same name but an exe extension. And this creates a decoy which basically tricks the system and carries the virus. Trojans. A Trojan is a program hiding inside of a useful program with malicious intent. Unlike viruses, a Trojan does not replicate itself. It's used to establish a back door to be exploited by the hackers. Worms. Worms are unlike viruses in the fact that they do not attack the host. They're self-contained programs that propagate across networks and computers. Worms are often installed through email attachments and they send a copy of themselves to every contact in the infected computer's email list. These are commonly used to overload email servers and achieve a denial of service attack. Ransomware. We've been hearing a lot about that lately, and that's a type of malware that denies access to the victim's data, threatening to publish, delete, or use the system for other nefarious purposes unless a ransom is paid. Advanced ransomware uses crypto-viral extortion, encrypting the victim's data so that it's impossible to decrypt without the decryption key. Spyware. Spyware is a type of program installed to collect information about users, their systems, and even their browsing habits. It sends this data to a remote user. The attacker then can use this information to blackmail or download or install or access the system from the internet. Number two, phishing. Phishing attacks are very common and involve sending mass amounts of fraudulent emails to users. And these are usually disguised as coming from a reliable source. The emails often have the appearance of being legitimate, but they link the recipient to a malicious file or script designed to grant attackers access to the device, the system, and to control it, or gather reconnaissance, install malicious scripts or files, or to extract data such as user information, financial information, and more. Phishing attacks also happen across social networks and other online communities through direct messages from users with a hidden intent. Fishers often leverage social engineering and other public information sources to gain and collect information about your work, interests, and activities. This gives attackers an edge when they're trying to convince you they are who they say. Several different types of phishing include spear phishing. These are targeted attacks directed at specific companies or specific individuals. Welling. Attacks targeted at senior executives and stakeholders within an organization. Farming. This leverages DNS cache poisoning to capture user credentials through a fake login landing page. Number three, man in the middle attacks. These occur when an attacker will intercept a two-party transaction or conversation. They insert themselves in the middle, basically, thus man in the middle. 
From there, the attackers can steal and manipulate data by interrupting traffic, manipulating traffic, and recording traffic. This type of attack usually exploits security vulnerabilities in a network, such as unsecured public Wi-Fi, to insert themselves between a visitor's device and the network's devices. The problem with this kind of attack is that it's very difficult to detect, as the victim thinks the information is going to a legitimate destination, and intentionally it is. Phishing or malware attacks are often leveraged to carry out a man-in-the-middle attack. Denial of service attacks. DOS or DOS attacks work by flooding systems, servers, networks with too much traffic to overload the resources and bandwidth. This results in rendering the system unable to process and fulfill legitimate requests. In addition to DOS or denial of service attacks, there are also distributed denial of service attacks. A DOS attack will saturate a system's resources with the goal of impending response to service requests. Alternatively, a DDOS attack, or distributed denial of service attack, is launched from several infected host machines with the goal of completing service denial and taking a system completely offline. And this paves the way for another attack to enter the network or the network environment. The most common types of DOS and DDoS attacks are the TCP send flood attack, the teardrop attack, Attack, the Smurf attack, the Ping of Death attack, and botnets. Number five, SQL injections. SQL is server query language. This occurs when an attacker inserts malicious code into SQL, forcing the server to deliver protected information. This type of attack usually incorporates submitting this code into an unprotected website comment or search box. When a SQL command uses a parameter instead of inserting the values directly, it can allow the backend to run malicious queries. Moreover, the SQL interpreter uses the parameter only as data without executing it as code. This gives the hacker access to the system to access and possibly even change the type of data intended. Number six, a zero-day exploit. A zero-day exploit is basically exploiting a network vulnerability when it is new and recently announced before a patch or a fix is released or implemented. Zero-day attackers jump at certain vulnerabilities in the small window of time when no solution or preventative measures do exist because when systems are first put online and networks are first implemented, there will be a variety of vulnerabilities that have not been identified yet and that's what the zero-day exploit hackers will attempt to expose and utilize. Number seven, the password attack. Passwords are a widespread method of authentication to access a secure information system or a secure network, making them an attractive and sometimes vulnerable target for cyber attackers. By accessing a person's password, an attacker can gain entry to confidential or critical data and secured systems, including the ability to actually manipulate and control the data systems. Password hackers use multiple methods to identify an individual password. These range from social engineering, gaining access to a password database, testing the network connection to obtain unencrypted passwords, or simply by guessing. Another method is executed in a systematic manner and this is known as brute force attack. A brute force attack uses a program to attempt all the possible variants and combinations of information to guess the password which is similar to the dictionary attack when an attacker will use a list of common passwords to attempt to gain access to a user's component or a network. Two-factor authentication and an account lockout after a certain amount of tries is usually the best defense for these. Cross-site scripting. A cross-site scripting attack sends malicious scripts into content from reliable websites. The malicious code will then join the dynamic content that's sent to the victim's browser. Usually, this type of malicious code consists of JavaScript code executed by the victim's browser, but it can also include Flash, HTML, and XSS. Number nine, rootkits. Rootkits are installed inside legitimate software where they can gain remote control and even administration level access over an entire system. The hacker will use the rootkit to steal passwords, keys, credentials, and retrieve critical data, and that's not to mention the damage that can be done with root level access. Root level access is the highest level of access you can have to a computer system. Since rootkits will generally hide inside legitimate software, once you see the pop-up and you allow the program to make changes to your system, the rootkit will then install itself in the system. 
computer, server, or etc. And it will remain dormant until the hacker activates it or it's triggered through a persistence mechanism. Rootkits are commonly spread through email attachments and downloads from insecure websites. Number 10, the Internet of Things, IoT attacks. With internet connectivity ranging across almost every type of device, this does create a very convenient society and ease of use for individuals. It also presents a growing and almost unlimited, nearly unlimited number of access points for attackers to exploit and wreak havoc. The interconnectedness of things makes it possible for these attackers to breach a system and use it as a gate to exploit other devices in the network. When we talk about the Internet of Things, we're talking about smart homes, smart grid applications. Homes in which all of your devices or a large portion of your devices are connected to the Internet, your TVs, your computers, your other devices, even home heating, even home cooling, even home security. These are all connected to the Internet and these can be manipulated. A hacker can use one of these devices to gain access to your network and once in your network, they'll gain access to your computer. And these types of attacks are becoming much more popular and growing exponentially due to the rapid growth of IoT devices and the low priority given to embedded security in these devices and their operating systems. There was one IoT attack case. A Las Vegas casino was attacked and the attacker gained entry through an internet connected thermometer inside one of the casino's fish tanks. And we see the spread of our home internet being shared with other people, our bandwidth being shared, especially by Amazon devices. This opens the door for hackers to come right into your home. So basically the complexity and variety of cyber attacks is increasing at an alarming rate. And there's a different type of attack for every purpose. Cybersecurity prevention strategies will differ for each type of attack. So as we can see, hackers or computer experts with a nefarious purpose have more than one way to attack our devices. We saw 10 different ways here, but within those 10 ways, there are hundreds of different programs, hundreds of different processes, hundreds of different methods they could use to incorporate any of the major categories of attacks that we've seen. This is becoming more than a threat. This is probably one of the greatest threats we face in our technologically advanced society. Well, I hope the video was informative. Thanks a lot for watching. For now, Sears Survivor, out.